Hey, what's going on internet? This is Josh Noel from Sunduck Film. We're going to create an awesome HUD interface. A lot of great techniques in this video and a lot of work that goes into creating this small little object. However, these are, you know, interface objects that are supposed to be composited into larger pieces of work. So I wanted to dive into a lot of cool concepts into doing this type of work with using shape layers and make sure that these graphics make sense and they're intuitive so you're not, just, you're not just creating any type of object. And of course, we can only create one HUD object in this tutorial. So I highly suggest checking out links in the video description. It'll take you to this page, which will showcase a couple of thousand HUD interface objects that can help you figure out what you need to create or if you need that time crunch, these are pre-made assets that are ready to go and they'll help you save that time. But those links are in the video description. Let's go ahead and jump in this video and let's get started. All right, here we are on the blank composition. And there's a lot of elements that we can start off with, but let's start off with just a circle. We'll grab the ellipse tool here at the top and we'll click on the word fill, set it to none. Click OK, click on the word stroke and set it to solid color. And we'll set this to white and be fine. And we'll come over here and we'll draw out a perfect circle. Hold down shift on your keyboard just so it's perfect. And then you come here to the line tab and center this up in the center of our composition. If you don't see the line tab, go up to window align. All right, so we just have an outline of a circle and I might just stick with this and we might want to even make this as thin as possible. We'll go to like one pixel on the width and perhaps what we can do here is go to add and we'll add trim paths. We'll go from the trim paths, we'll increase the start and I'll turn off the mask. You can turn off the mask by clicking this uh, mask icon here and we'll lower this by a little bit. And what we can do is all click the stopwatch for offset, type in time asterisk 500 and close off that. So now this will just animate all the way through, we can control, uh, you know, the speed of it by you know lowering the mount. So maybe we'll go to like 200, and that's a pretty decent speed in my opinion. And now that we have this here, we can call it a uh, circle one, and we can come here and duplicate it by going up to Edit Duplicate, and then we can offset it in time. And then what we can do is open up, go back to the contents, go to the ellipse one, go to the ellipse path. We can increase the size. And then we'll come here to the transform ellipse one, and then we can rotate this a little bit. So then it'll be a, we'll have a nice offset here. And now we kind of have an outline of our circle. And what we can do here, what I would like to do is grab both these layers and we'll pre-compose it and we can call it circle outline. And then we can just move this back in time. So those will always be up there. And now we just have this outline of a heads up display. All right, so let's start building our way inward a little bit. So we'll go ahead and create a circle of lines and what we'll do is grab the pen tool, make sure no layer is selected. And what you want to do is bring up your title safe. So come here to title action saves and you'll see this crosshair here. What you're going to want to do is from the center, click a point and just draw a point up here. Just keep hold down shift on your keyboard. It's very important that you do this or it'll come out of an alignment. And now we have a straight line in here and we'll come here to the shape layer, go to add and we'll add a repeater. And then we'll zoom out here and we'll increase the number of copies. So you see there's plenty of copies in here. We come here to the transform repeater one, set the X position down to zero, and then come here to the rotation and increase the rotation. And also we can increase the anchor point here and it'll draw out how big we want this to be. So using the Y anchor point and the rotation, we can finesse how many, how you know congruent we want our lines here to be. And when we're happy, we can grab our shape layer, use the arrow keys on our keyboard, and we can just bring this up to fit in the center of our circle. And of course, continue to increase the anchor point. Now we have the circle of lines. So what's cool is we can come here to the number of copies, set it down to zero, add a keyframe for copies, move forward by maybe a second, and increase it all the way to the max, which really depends on how big you're gonna have it, but 43 is good for me. And there you have it. Now we have that there. And then if we want to rotate this, we can grab the pan by hand tool here at the top, grab the anchor point and put it in the center of our composition. So bring up the crosshair again. And then we hit R on our keyboard for rotation. And we can rotate these by hit adding keyframe for rotation. Moving forward. And we can rotate these. So of course we can also do that time expression, which I would suggest that. So I want to do a very similar concept to this, but instead I want it to be more of like a sp uh, speedometer, if you will. So what I want to do here is grab the rounded rectangle tool. I'm to turn on the fill, turn off the stroke, and this is fine. And what I want to do here is do that same technique again, where we're drawing out a rounded rectangle, kind of right above that line there, and can make it nice and small. And we can open up the rectangle one, go to the rectangle path one, and we'll come here to the roundness, and I'll set this down to probably about ten. 
So that's essentially what we have. And I think that's fine. And we'll want to do the same exact thing with the repeater. So we'll grab the repeater and we'll increase the number of copies. Go to the transform repeater one. We'll set the X position down to zero. We'll increase the rotation. And we'll increase the anchor point. And we definitely will. And I'll set the rotation down to 11% or 11 degrees. And then we'll increase the number of copies. So what I like to do is maybe change the fill color to maybe a dark gray here. And then I want to duplicate this layer. And I'm going to come here to fill. And I want to set this to you know a primary color. Maybe we'll do like yellow or orange. And we'll click OK. And from here, open up this layer. Go in the contents. We'll come here to the repeater one. And we're going to decrease the number of copies. And actually, we'll also offset this. You know, we'll start it from down here at the bottom and we'll decrease the number of copies. And we can go all the way across like this. So, what we'll do is we'll add a keyframe for copies. We'll move forward in time to maybe like three seconds and we'll increase this all the way to almost the max, maybe to right here. And then we'll move forward in time and we can flicker it backwards by a touch. So, it'll be kind of a nice speedometer in a way. And it's not exactly consistent. Okay, so now this is essentially what we have, this nice extra animation here. And that looks good now. And then perhaps what we like to do is cut off some of this here so it's not perfectly circled. So go back into the original shape layer there with the speedometer. And we'll come here to the repeater one. We'll decrease the number of copies. And now we have this very nice, you know, gauge in here. It looks good. All right. And then from here, perhaps what we can do is grab the ellipse tool again. And we'll draw out like another circle here. And make sure... This is centered up, and we will set this to the stroke. And go back to fill and set it to none. And we'll increase the stroke by a lot this time, and we'll probably want to grab that color, like that orange primary color. That's totally cool. We'll go back to add, and we'll add the trim paths, and it will increase the start. And perhaps this time we'll go to the stroke, and we'll set the stroke to a round cap versus line cap. We'll come here to the transform ellipse one. We'll all click the stopwatch for rotation. We'll type in wiggle, open parenthesis, 0. 0.5, comma, 40, close parenthesis. And actually, we'll change it to 2. 2, comma, 40, close parenthesis. Nice. So now we have this in here. We can duplicate this layer, and we can rotate it from the center here. Hit R on keyboard. We can rotate it, offset it a little bit. Now we're getting a little bit of a HUD in there and that looks totally cool. And I would like to, you know, create the ellipse tool one more time. This time we'll turn off the stroke and we'll turn on our fill and we'll draw out one uh, circle from the center here. Make sure this is completely centered up. Maybe we'll make it a little bit bigger and maybe I'll make it white. Click OK, and maybe we'll lower the opacity on it by hitting T on keyboard and we'll lower the opacity. So now we're getting the center of something good in here. All right, so let's say we want to create the numbers to go along with our speedometer, if that's what you're doing, or some numbers that make sense. We'll grab the textile tool. We'll type in our number. We'll just type in zero because we want to start from nothing. No big deal. We want to have control over this. We'll set this up in our alignment. Then we'll go to Effect, Expression Controls, and we'll add Slider Control. We'll come here, we'll open the text, go to the text layer, we'll all click the stopwatch for source text, and we'll parent this to the slider. Okay, so from here, we'll want to start this off, you know, kind of make this make sense with our, you know, uh, animation here. We'll go ahead and add a keyframe for the slider. We'll move forward to the end here, and we'll increase this to whatever number we want. So here, you'll see that we'll have this count up, however, we get decimals. So then what we need to do is we'll come over here to the beginning of expression, and we're going to type in math dot round then we're going to type in open parenthesis come here to the end and type in close parenthesis then you need to make sure that the m in math is capitalized now look at that perfect you have that perfect control over that keyframe and if you want we can animate it backwards by a touch to kind of complement that other animation we were doing Okay, so we can add some more design into this. So maybe what we can do is duplicate our circle outline, hit S ranking for scale, and we can scale this N word. And we'll duplicate one more time. We'll do another scale. And this will create some more details into this. And of course, we can rotate it. So we can offset that by a touch. So we'll have just a little bit more design into this entire animation. And the last thing I want to do is create a grid here, a little extra design to tie this all together. And we're going to have a nice animation in here. So what we can do is grab the pen tool. And I want to create just a 
nice grid going across here. So we'll hold down shift and we'll draw a point straight through. And we'll set this to stroke, of course. And of course, we'll want to dial this in. Maybe set this to white. And we'll put this layer underneath everything. And then we'll go ahead and duplicate this layer, hit R on keyboard for rotation, and we can rotate this by 90 degrees. And I think that's pretty cool. And we'll come here, we'll pre-compose these two layers together, and we can call it uh, cross. And we'll hit R on the keyboard for rotation, and we'll all click the stopwatch for rotation. We'll type in wiggle, open parenthesis, two comma 80, close parenthesis. Well, so what I would simply like to do is, everything that's remaining up here is do simple scale animations within this. So what we'll do is hit S on keyboard for scale, and we'll add a keyframe for everything within this composition. We'll move these keyframes forward in time, and we'll set the scale down to 0%. And we can offset these, but of course we need to make sure that everything is coming in from the center, and for the layers that are not doing that, you need to pinpoint those layers. So like we have this layer here, what we can do is come here to the last keyframe once we pinpoint that layer, grab the pan behind tool, grab the anchor point, and make sure it's in the center of everything. So there, we'll know it's coming in from the middle. All right, now that we have everything animating in from the middle here, what I'd like to do is offset some of these layers in time just to randomize things by touch. And that was pretty cool. So, of course, you can expand on however you would like to animate that. And let's go ahead and pre-compose all of our layers except for the background. And we can call it, you know, interface one. Then we're going to do this awesome glow effect to really make this stand out and make it look really legit. So what we're going to do is we're going to affect perspective drop shadow. We're going to come here to the drop shadow color, set it to white, click OK. We're going to set the distance down to zero. We're going to increase the softness to probably about 50 or so. We can decrease the uh, opacity by touch. We'll go ahead and duplicate this effect again. We're going to really increase the softness to probably about 200. We'll lower the opacity on this. So we're creating a little bit of a glow effect here. And then, then we'll go to Effect Stylize Glow. So then we'll come here to the Glow Radius and increase this up to probably about 75 or so. Increase the Glow Intensity by a touch. Then what we'll do is go to Glow Colors versus Original Colors. Set it to A and B Colors. Go to Color Looping. Set it to Solid Tooth B greater than A. Come here to Color A and you can select the color of your choice. I like orange for this. And we're going to have a really nice glow. And of course, you can change the shadow color to the orange as well by grabbing the eyedropper tool. And that will make things a little bit more you know, even. You'll have that very strong color. And look at that. Nice. Look how nice and very glowed out that is. All right. That's looking good. And then what I would like to... And then to take this glow effect even further, I'll pre-compose this. And we'll call it glow. Move all attributes into new composition. And change the colors of everything just real quick just to make it stand out a little bit more. Then what we'll do is we'll duplicate this glow effect, go to the bottom layer, go to Effect, Blur, and Sharpen, and we're going to grab CC Radial Fast Blur. We'll come here and maybe we'll increase the amount by a touch. We can lower the opacity of this layer. And then I'm going to duplicate it one more time. Go to the bottom layer, delete the CC Radial Fast Blur, go to Effect, Perspective, Drop Shadow, set it to white. We'll decrease the distance to zero, increase the softness, by a touch and that's nice and of course we can create a new adjustment layer go to layer new adjustment layer go to effect color correction curves and we can create a little s curve here to make the contrast a little bit more great we can even shift the colors by a touch if we really want to and i think that's totally fine but creating a little extra contrast can really make this look really nice and now i think overall we have a nice effect going on here we can go ahead and see what we created real quick and after a quick render, here's what we have completed. And it's a you know, nice HUD element that you can use to mix with other HUD elements that you're creating for, you know, whatever you're doing for your interface. Um, and of course, you can have it be, you know, have a little bit of meeting with, with the numbers and the speedometer, like what we did, for example. So it's very high tech, and usually these things are meant to be small, not like this big, and you composite it into a, you know, larger piece of work. However, this was a good way to just show you how to use these built-in tools inside of After Effects to create your own, own HUD interface. And like I said, to begin the video, be sure to check out our links in the video description. If you're looking to save time and produce high quality work or you're looking for inspiration, go ahead and check out the hundreds of examples of HUD interfaces that can help you take your work to the next level and help you create exactly what you're looking to do.